Hi everyone, here's the Book Chemist once again. Today I'm reviewing Jonathan Lethem's latest novel, Brooklyn Crime novel, Ignore the Color of My Edition, it's a, it's a review copy. Uh, Brooklyn Crime novel, available in the UK in November 2023, in the US I believe in October 2023, so it's probably out by the time this review is going to be published. When I first read the title of Lethem's latest novel uh, a few months ago, I thought that it was going to be another one of his hard-boiled detective novels. In fact, I thought it was a kind of sly joke on the predictability of Lethem writing another crime novel uh, shortly after the, the movie version of Motherless Brooklyn brought that book back into the conversation. I think a joke might be here, might be hidden in Brooklyn Crime Novel's title, but it's a joke on me and on any other reader who is going to make the same assumption about the content of the novel. If ever there was a book that was not what it says on the tin, it's this one. Uh, Brooklyn crime novel is very much about Brooklyn. It couldn't be more about Brooklyn if it tried, but it's not a crime novel and I believe it's arguable whether it's even a novel in the first place. The crime mentioned here is the crime perpetrated in the second half of the 20th century and especially from the 70s onward in and on certain areas of Brooklyn. Uh, a socio-economic shift that changed the way countless families lived, ruined uh, the neighborhood for many of them, forcing them to move elsewhere, uh, soured uh, racial dynamics in the neighborhood, complicated them, um, and in, in many ways impacted, in, in countless different ways, impacted the lives of people who were growing up in that borough at the time, including the characters in Brooklyn Crime Novel. Uh, this is a very complex phenomenon uh, and the novel explores it in all its possible complexities, but f for the sake of simplicity, the name it's, that's usually applied to it is gentrification. The novel is very much about gentrification in Brooklyn and it is about uh, the consequences of this and most notably the uh, the bullying, the climate of constant bullying, constant threat, constant mugging that children growing up on these streets at the time had to endure on a daily basis, what that did to their own perceptions as selves, especially as uh, young boys, as male selves, what it did on their, their bodies, their psyches, uh, and beyond. Now, if like me, you are big Jonathan Lethem fans, there is only one thought you can possibly be having right now, which is, wait, wait a second, didn't Lethem already write a novel about Brooklyn gentrification and bullying? Indeed, he did, the award-winning Fortress of Solitude, possibly Lethem's greatest novel, although I believe Chronic City might be even better. I was going to wave the novel around, but I just moved into my new place and the books are all uh, scattered everywhere on the bookshelves, I couldn't possibly find it. So is that the joke? Uh, is the joke that the novel that sounds like it's a rehash of Motherless Brooklyn is actually a rehash of Fortress of Solitude? No. Brooklyn Crime Novel doesn't feel so much as a rewrite of The Fortress of Solitude, as much as a commentary on The Fortress of Solitude, an act of self-exegesis, a writer reflecting on concerns that are clearly very important for him and that I get the sense have been weighing on him for the 20 years that have passed between Fortress of Solitude and this latest book. Many of the same plots and the same episodes that we, uh, uh, we, we experienced in Fortress of Solitude are repeated in here, expanded and complicated especially. There is even an extended subplot about a writer who became famous because he wrote a novel about gentrification in Brooklyn, who is clearly a stand-in for Lethem. And there are also um, very direct references to uh, Breakfast of Champions, another novel where the author, in that case Kurt Vonnegut, uh, is confronted by the fictional characters he's created. Without trying to read the author's mind, which is always a difficult and fairly pointless pursuit, it seems pretty obvious that Lethem is here dealing with uh, with the, the texture of a place in space and time that is really relevant and significant to him. He grew up on Dean Street at this time. Um, Fortress of Solitude is apparently uh, autobiographical to a large extent, 
and uh, clearly uh, there was a lot that was left unsaid or at least a lot that needed to be complicated to be expanded um, especially now that so much time has passed um, I'll put a link in the description box to an article that Ditham wrote in the New Yorker recently where he talks at length once again about gentrification, about the creation of this fictional neighborhood in Brooklyn called Boyerum Hill, where the two novels, Fortress and this one, take place. Uh, it's clearly something that matters to him deeply, and it's clearly something that deserves, it's a phenomenon that deserves to be explored in all its complexity. Gentrification is so fascinating because it's at the same time naive and evil, it's spontaneous and also planned, it's idealistic but it's also cruel. What makes the treatment of gentrification in Brooklyn Cried novel so stimulating is that Lethem doesn't just explore it as a cold theoretical concept, although by all means he does explore it as a cold theoretical concept too. He also shows you the impact, the real-life consequences of gentrification on the psyche and the bodies of the characters inhabiting the novel, especially the, these young kids. That's what makes this phenomenon uh, so tangible. G gentrification is one of those words that risks sounding a little wishy-washy, like it means a bit of everything, but it doesn't feel wishy-washy in here. If anything, it feels um, like something concrete uh, and you can you can see its impact on people's lives. I would be amiss if I didn't mention as a lifelong H.P. Lovecraft obsessive that one of the subplots in Brooklyn Crime Novel, uh, this by the way is a book that is so extremely fragmented, so extremely disintegrated that it, it is nothing but subplots. One of these subplots deals with um, a boy who is trying to locate the lost papers of H.P. Lovecraft, supposedly buried in the, uh, the basement of a, um, one of the used bookstores of Brooklyn. Lovecraft himself was a Brooklyn resident during his years in New York, a time that he hated and that brought out the most ignorant, the most appalling, the most disgusting feelings in him. And in this sense, uh, he comes to stand in Brooklyn Crime Novel as a rather significant figure, a sort of embodiment of a, a certain type of white fear of Brooklyn uh, as a place of uh, a crime, a place of grit, and a place where different ethnic groups live together. What I like so much about this subplot is that it feels extremely Lovecraftian. I love the way the subject matter comes to influence the treatment of this subplot, its theme and its nature. Uh, it starts out as an investigation into something rather ominous but fascinating, and the investigator ends up revealing something much more hideous than it could have anticipated, and especially something that reveals something awful about his own milieu and his own background. It's very hard for me to assess Brooklyn crime novel because Jonathan Lethem is one of my very favorite novelists and I love fiction about cities and especially obsessive self-reflective fiction about cities. If anybody wrote a book like this about Milan, it would be my wildest literary dream come true. At the same time, I realize that a common reader, somebody who's maybe not experienced in Lethem's fiction, who were to pick up this book, would be understandably confused and possibly even underwhelmed. There's also something very American, I find, in thinking that your neighborhood deserves this type of treatment, even if your neighborhood is Brooklyn. Uh, believe you me, I could tell you stories about Sesto San Giovanni that would make you real with curiosity and, and, and shock, and I could draw interesting metaphors about the, the recent history of this town as a parable about the decadence of of the 20th century, but I don't think people would care, not if I packaged it in the same way, and I'd be surprised if people did in some ways. My estimate, which is undoubtedly simplistic, is that this is a book for Lethem's fans. It's the kind of book that a writer of Lethem's accomplishment deserves to be allowed to write. In this, and also in its convoluted concerns for the formative materials of childhood, it reminded me a lot of Umberto Eco's uh, 
the mysterious flame of Queen Luana. The only other people I would possibly recommend this book to are people who are really interested in gentrification or really interested in the history of Brooklyn. But even in those cases, I would 100% recommend you read Fortress of Solitude first before you read this one. Um, it is definitely Lethem's most daring and experimental book, uh, following quite a few novels that were much more conventional, formally speaking, at least by Lethem's standards. Uh, it is a, it's a daring project, uh, it's an impressive feat, and while it did leave me puzzled, it's not a nasty or a negative type of puzzlement by any means. Uh, I do look forward to hearing what you think though, because I, I suspect that this is going to be a polarizing book, uh, and I, I imagine it will rub some people the wrong way, definitely people who are maybe not prepared to it and who come into it looking for a bit more of a conventional uh, narrative structure. Uh, what do you think about Brooklyn Crime Novel? Is it a bit lost inside its own concerns? Is it heartfelt and uh, significant and stimulating? Is it, does it just exist in function of Fortress of Solitude? Does it stand on its own legs? I look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching my review and thank you especially to my patrons for supporting the YouTube channel. I really, uh, I'm really grateful to, to all those people. Uh, bye everybody.